Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to take a look at the Art Whale Artist Watercolor Tubes. And I know this looks like a joke, doesn't it? This looks like these are made for kids. But I'm going to tell you why I bought these. Um, every time I've been searching on Amazon for like Windsor Newton watercolors or um, M. Graham watercolors or, you know, because when I make supply list stuff, I, I will look around, I'll look on Amazon, I'll look on Blick, I'll see who has the cheapest price. And, um, I'll link them in the video description so you know if people are looking to use the same thing I'm using then they can find them but every time I was searching for a professional brand of watercolors these kept popping up and I'm like why would these pop up if I'm looking for a professional a professional paint so and the other thing that was like catching my eye was like why are they $31 you know that seems expensive for a budget paint so I clicked on it out of curiosity and what I noticed was that these were 15 milliliter tubes, which is unusual. You don't usually don't see 15 milliliter tubes in um, in the budget or student grade paints. They're usually either um, 8, 12, or um, 10 milliliters, sometimes 7 milliliters, but it's usually like 10 or 12. And um, they're metal tubes. They're not the plastic tubes. And they have big caps on them. They were looking to me a lot like more professional paints. So I was like, hmm, I wonder what this company's all about. I searched them, couldn't really find anything, any information about them. And so I started to look at the reviews that were there. And the only reviews on this product were from Vine reviewers. And Vine, I guess, is a program that Amazon has. And uh, they'll send different products to them for free for review. So I'm a little bit... Um, and, and a lot of times they're not being reviewed by painters, they're being reviewed by maybe people that selected that product to review, you know, because they want to paint for their kids or whatever. But um, I looked at the photos that were in the reviews and they showed that there was a swatch that came with it. And on the swatch, there was pigment information. And so I was zooming in and checking it out and nothing hit red flags for me and seeing the color swatched out, they actually look pretty good. So I hemmed and hawed, I kept kept checking back on that listing for oh probably a week or two and then um i was looking on my phone one day and there was a coupon for five dollars off so I'm, i decided just bite the bullet and try it and i'm so glad i did because i think i found kind of a diamond in the rough in the rough here so um we're going to take an in-depth look at these i'm going to show you the i think i did four or five paintings with these we're going to look at those and um they might be right for you uh so let's let's get to it so the first thing i want to i want to show you is the tube they are aluminum. Um, this, they have a sticker on them, and actually, it was because the stickers kind of look like they want to come off. So I was trying to peek under there to see if there was some like maker's mark that I could figure out who was making these. Because generally, um, your budget tubes or your less expensive like um, or house brand tubes are made by a bigger company. I'm like, is Shenhan making these? Which I don't think so, because they're out of Korea. Is Paul Rubens making these? It, like, who's making these? You know. So I get get kind of nosy. I'm trying to figure out. Um, uh, what's what and on the tube I can see that there is a color number there is the color name permanent orange there's a pigment PO 43 permanence rating um, which is a three star rating and I believe three is uh, light fast two is um, moderately light fast and probably one is fugitive all these were two or threes but going through and looking at the pigment information I don't really have any qualms with any of these colors um, there's transparency information, and then of course the size 15 ml. Um, Non-toxic, conforms to ASTM D5236, and manufactured in PRC, which is the People's Republic of China. Um, so I don't know who's making these. Art Whale is the name here, and there is a store out of the Philippines called Art Whale, which um, I follow on Instagram because they often will share um, like uh, loose botanicals that I think are really pretty. And I wonder if this might be their house brand and maybe they're just branching out to the American market, but um, they're, a, they're a decent paint. I'm not to like give away any spoilers or anything. So let's look at the, um, the swatches. The only issue I had with the tubes was that one tube, I'll show you actually right here, it was a cerulean. I had a hard time getting the cap back on it and also the paint was really stiff and I had to use a palette knife to kind of mash it down into my um into the palette I put this in so but all the other ones came out beautiful consistency um no problems whatsoever and but the, the cap actually the cap's going on fine now I think what happens is there's like an inner seal on the cap and I think sometimes it kind of catches on the tube when you unscrew it and then when you try to put the tube back on that little inner seal keeps you from being able to line up the threads right so if that happens just take the end of your paintbrush and and like push on the inside of the cap and it'll push the seal back in but uh, caps are nice and big easy to remove if you have arthritis or um maybe you're, you're you want to get these for your kids and it you know they're 
pretty easy to remove. I didn't have any issues. Sometimes the tiny little uh, necks of uh, paints and the tiny little tubes are difficult. They're easy to drop and hard to put back on. And also it can be uh, difficult to um, control like that overspray of, um, of paint, like the little Daniel Smith five milliliter tubes. Anyway, I thought the tube build was good. I can read the printing on the tubes, which is excellent. And there's all this pigment information on every one. There's no cobalts or cadmiums or any other pigments in here that I would say keep it away from your teenagers or kids. I would just say, you know, no pain is good to eat, ever. <laughs> so, uh, and only mainers are going to get that joke. Um, <laughs> but, you know, if you know your kid isn't going to be like, you know, eating the paint, I think you're going to be fine. Um, this may be, you know, hey, start them off right. If you can get decent paint for a cheap price, start them off right. I don't think any adult is really going to complain about this paint too much. And it sounds like I'm gush gushing, but I've been looking for something wrong with these since I got them and since I've been using them and I can't find it. So let's look through the pigments. Let's through the, look through the paints. The first one is Permanent Lemon Yellow. Pigment P... Oh my gosh, let me get my light over here. Uh, P184. It's um, uh, kind of a greenish uh, based yellow. It's nice and pure. Mixes well. Uh, transparent. Here we have Azo Yellow Medium, which is a mixture of P154 and P062, which I don't think it has too much of P062, but it's a nice, rich, warm yellow, which mixes well, too. Um, and all the colors so far, nothing. Those are just, those are only have uh, two stars, but I did research all the pigments on handprint, and they all are um, very light, fast colors, so I'm pretty impressed with the pigment choices that they've used. Permanent Orange, P043, another light, fast color. Here, I, I swatched these fresh from the tube, and um, so I didn't get a very good uh, gradation to light. I just I just decided to swatch them. So what I did over here was like really dilute it with water and do another um, splotch over a line. I put the lines down before I painted, obviously, so we could see how transparent they are. Uh, but that way, it just kind of shows you mass tone versus uh, very diluted. Then we have Vermilion, which is a mixture of PR254 and uh, PY154, and that is, um, uh, so you get a nice warm kind of scarlety color. Permanent Red Light it is just plain PR254. That's also known as like Pyrrole Red, if you, or Pyrrole Scarlet, if you've had that in like the Daniel Smith line before, you'll probably be very familiar with that. It's a more light fast version of Napthol Crimson, which, or Napthol Red, which is just a gorgeous transparent red, but it's not as light fast in watercolors as it is in like um, acrylics or oils. So it's a nice, um, it's a nice version for us watercolorists to have a more stable color. Um, now here, I think there might be a typo. This is Matter Lake Deep, and they're saying it's PR122, which is generally quinacridone magenta. And even though this is a cool red, it doesn't give me those pinky vibes. I think that might be actually PR177, which is a uh, moderately light fast color. And then we have Permanent Red Violet, which is PV19, which is quite light fast. They're giving, um, they've given all these a two actually, so they're not trying to say it's better than it is. I think they're almost a little too conservative with the light fast ratings, according to the pigments. But, um, but hey, I'd rather have that than have something promised, somebody promising something that it's not. Um, so PV19 is a great, cool red, um, wonderful for mixing cool purples and uh, clean, clean colors. We've got Light Oxide Red, which is PR101, which you've probably seen that as uh, English Red, Indian Red, um, Light Red, uh, Venetian Red. And uh, then we have their Burnt Sienna, which is a mixture of PR101 and PBK11. Now, PBK11 is Pigment Black 11. That's um, uh, magnetic black. It uh, also goes by lunar, lunar Black or Mars Black. And the neat thing about that is it's highly granulating. Now, generally, my preference for Burnt Sienna is PBR7. However, um, I found a few PR101 mixes that I've liked recently, so I'm kind of... Um, I'm kind of okay with it, and especially painting with this, with the granulating aspects of the PBK11, adding it with ultramarine blue, which is very granulating in this, in this set, it's beautiful, and, um, and I'll show you some examples of that, uh, in a minute. And then, um, so, but if you don't, if you do want a PBR7 burn sienna, you're not going to get it here. These mixes remind me of, um, Mission Gold and, uh, Van Gogh actually. So um, neither of those are Chinese companies or made in China as far as I know. So it's kind of interesting. It's just, um, it's interesting. I haven't seen this quality of paint come out. Um, Paul Rubens makes a great paint. Paul Rubens would be the only exception of seeing this quality paint come out of China. Um, then we have Permanent Yellow Green, which is PR154 and PG7. That's PG7, by the way, a phthalo green, which is a nice, um, uh, cool, 
transparent, highly light fast green. Um, then we've got Hooker's Green Deep, which is the same mix, which is obviously a little, but this time it has PG7, then PY14. So that one has more yellow, that one has more green. This I think is another typo. This is olive green and it says it's PG7 and PY14. So I think what happened was maybe they just accidentally copied and pasted or copied the same information down for this. But you can see the undertones on this. It's got uh, much more of a, um, of a dirty undertone. I think that, um, cause I was just kind of playing around with the other colors in the kit. And this is, uh, that color. This is a mixture of the, uh, PY154 with a PG7 with also a little bit of the, um, light oxide red in it just to see if that was enough. And then I added more yellow and more light oxide red and I got that. So I think it has PR101 in it as well, or it's got a different yellow base. Um, I think that's a typo. So I, I'm concerned that maybe Matter Lake Deep and Olive Green have typos in their pigment information. I'm not a scientist. I don't know, maybe they cooked the pigment longer, or ground it finer, or did something and, and that made that particular version um, lean a different way, but that's just my, um, and that's just my guess anyway. Then we have a gorgeous sap green, which is a mix of PY129 and PG7. We have thalo green, single pigment, PG7. We'll have to count up how many single, single pigment colors we have here. This is a cobalt blue hue. It is a mixture of PB29, which is what they use for ultramarine blue, what everybody uses for ultramarine blue, plus PW6. Now what's curious about this is that it's got the beautiful texture, obviously, like because it has ultramarine in there, but it's not really chalky and it's very transparent. So it doesn't look like it would have that much PW6 in it, which is titanium white, which is a opaque white. So that's kind of interesting. Um, but I just wanted to say that because they call it cobalt blue and not cobalt blue hue. And it is a hue. And um, if you're trying to avoid co cobalt for yourself or for your children, that doesn't have a cobalt in it. And then we have phthalo blue and they're just calling it PB15. They're not doing, they're not giving it like a colon, three or colon six or anything. It's a very intense uh, phthalo blue. I diluted it quite a bit over here. Um, so they just say PB15. It does seem to be a little bit uh, warmer than other phthalo blues that that would be like the uh, PB15 colon three, but uh, it will definitely give you a great green mix. I'll show you the color wheel mixes in a minute. Um, just an observation. The ultramarine deep is very uh, red biased. It's gorgeous. It's what I like in an ultramarine. It's very intense and it granulates like a champ. It's um, it's a gorgeous paint. Cerulean blue is kind of weird. It's PB15 plus PW6, uh, but still a very vibrant cerulean. Um, it, I, I've noticed on Asian brands, they will use the phthalo blue and call it cerulean a lot. So um, I'm wondering if there's something, because if you have a Western brand, a cerulean blue is generally PB36 and it's very, um, it's a little more opaque. It's kind of textured. It's softer. It's not as highly tinted as this. Um, so this again should say hue, uh, but it doesn't. And um, it's almost a little greener than your phthalo blue. So if you're mixing and you want to get a greener blue to start with, because you want to make some vibrant greens, you could go with that and not go with the phthalo if that's your preference. Then it's got permanent blue violet, which actually looks a lot like a dioxazine violet to me, but it's a mix of PV19 and PB29, which actually, I'm wondering if that might be a typo because I would think there might be a little more granulation in that if it was a mix. It does look like, um, it looks like uh, doxazine violet to me, which I'm totally blanking. What is that, PV23? Um, but anyway, they say it's a it's a mix. I mean, I have no reason to doubt them. And I guess if it was mostly PV19 and a little bit of PV29, there wouldn't be as much granulation. But still, I would think I'd see some texture because the what they're using for PV29, PV29 is very granulating. And uh, then we've got yellow ochre, PY42. They're only giving that a two-star trend, uh, two-star permanence, which surprises me because that's a very permanent pigment. Um, burnt Umber, their Burnt Umber is also a mixture of PR101 and PBK6. So instead of the uh, granulating black, it's using uh, PBK6. Van Dyke Brown is uh, PR101, PBK6. It's a darker, richer color, must have more black in it. Um, it's odd, it's a little stranger using that mixture for so many browns, but um, you know, you have the information. You can decide whether it's for you or not, which I think is important. I'd rather have all the information out there and decide whether I want it or not than have, you know, just pretty colors and buy them and have them not mix and act the way I want to. Um, then we have Ivory Black, which is a mix of PBK6 and PBK9. And then we have Payne's Gray, which is a mix of PBK6 and PV19. So it's actually, that's a really gorgeous uh, Payne's Gray. And if you took that, 
you could mix it in with some ultramarine, get a little more texture to it if you want to, use it as is. Um, it's actually a very transparent, uh, transparent kind of purple leaning black. It's quite, quite pretty. Uh, or gray, I should say. But there you have the colors, jewel, jewel like, just gorgeous. Look at the light oxide red. You could really thin that down and um, and use that as a base for some skin tones too. It's uh, it's nice. I love that there's no white in the set because we always don't we always have like tubes of white left over from like most sets and most uh, pan sets even. So it's a it's a pretty good set. I would like to see fewer mixed browns, but for the price and for the quality, I really can't complain. So let's look at the finished work. I want to show you what I where how I uh, put the paints because I was curious whether they would crack. And I let them dry for a few days. It did dry out well. I didn't put too much in there. A little cracking on the orange, but um, but overall not bad at all. They rewet very well. And this palette here, this was a surprise to me because I've had this for a couple of years, and I didn't know this about it. This is the Royal Atlantical Large Folding Palette. And um, the neat thing about this, because this only has 20 wells and I had 24 colors, so I took some half pans and I just used double-sided tape and put them in, and this will close. And I can fit, now if I'm gonna use, if I was gonna use the, the thumb ring, I wouldn't wanna put any more there, but if I wanted to, I could put three more there, and I could put, um, I could put eight in each of those sections there and hold a ton more paint. And I love this only wells on one side. I don't like it when they have wells on this side and wells on that side because I always, like, uh, especially in the summer, because it's humid in Maine, and if I take it traveling, my paint travels. Or, you know, something will dry out and fall, and it will get all mixed up. So I really like this palette. It's not very expensive. I think it's about $8. Um, and you might be able to find it in your local big box store if you can't find it online. I did find it on Amazon, but the shipping was kind of high. Um, but Blick might have it. So I will see if I can find a source for you guys. Um, but if not, I'm pretty sure I've seen this in, like, Michael's. And uh, I think when AC Moore was open, they had it. But it's a nice, sturdy, not brittle folding palette. And um, yeah, everything rewets really well from dry and no complaints there. I just, I like to show you that because everyone will ask, does it crack? Crack, if the paint cracks, that's not a sign of good quality. So, and some of them will pop right out, you know, some, some paints, even Topman does, and Topman's not terrible. Okay, so this is one, there will be, if there's not up already, there will be a tutorial of this. I'm gonna zoom in, I'll zoom in a little bit here. And the reason I did this, I just did this one today because I wanted to see what a really wet and wet sky would look like um, because the colors granulate so pretty. The, the blue, the ultramarine blue is such beautiful granulation that I just wanted to try that. Um, these paints were such a dream to work with. I think these would be an excellent beginner choice um, because I don't feel like a lot of times with budget supplies, I feel like I have to compensate for something and I don't feel like I had to compensate anything here. Now, I'm wondering that maybe the tra they, their, rate, their light fast ratings, I'm surprised that so, so many of them were twos when I would think they would be threes considering, and I'm guessing it's because they're really light fast ones were threes just going by what I know about the pigments. Um, so maybe they have fillers or extenders that are making them dilute the light fast or make the light fast less, but the colors are so vibrant and intense that, I don't know, it could be there's some optical brighteners or something that might be cutting down on the light fastness. I really don't know much about optical brighteners. Um, and I do a lot of work in sketchbooks, so I don't really have a lot of uh, fading issues. I also live in Maine. We're very far from the equator, so we don't get the very extreme sun. Um, but I was very impressed with working with these, how easy it was to paint with these, and just the gorgeous texture that I could get in the sky. I could see myself experimenting with more skies with this set just because of the beautiful granulation of the ultramarine. Not all ultramarines granulate this much. This one reminds me a lot of the Daniel Smith French ultramarine, so if you like that color, you've just got a bargain right here because, <laughs> man, $30 for 24 15 ml tubes, that's pretty crazy. Um, then this was just a little, um, another little wet and wet demo I did. I was just kind of, a lot of times when I'm just trying out paints, I do some, you know, doodly roses just to see. Very easy, very, very easy. I did notice, like, when I really diluted that red that it, it did seem to go dull. Like, I felt like I lost quite a bit of saturation, um, in the red because I really had it dulled down. I did have a little bit of yellow mixed in there too because I was kind of pulling it out to coral towards the edges. So that's part of that reason. But even in the rosebuds, um, I had it pretty watered down and, and from wet to dry, there was quite a shift. This was really wet when I painted it, but still um, expect a shift with the with the Matter Lake Deep as with any, um, any crimson light colors. But I did notice that on there. So I do want to mention that.
But I also use that color along with the permanent red violet on this little donut. And I love the shadow, the gradation on that shadow. I took a bunch of photos um, when I bought some vegan donuts a couple weeks ago, and I'm like, I've got to paint that. That's so pretty. And so that's what that reference was from. And I've, I've actually been taking a lot more references because of World Watercolor Month and then just having them on my phone. So when I'm just kind of lounging around, I can just grab my sketchbook, grab my paints and just, you know, do a quick, do a quick painting. So I'm hoping to keep that habit up throughout uh, August as well, because it was just, it was so nice. It's so nice to see the work, collection of work build over the month. But anyway, um, very easy to build up texture, very easy to get intense colors. Um, I just, I love that granulation. That was a mix of the Burnt Sienna and the, um, the Ultramarine. Now, if you don't want to use the Burnt Sienna because you don't like that mixed black, you definitely could use the Light Oxide Red, or you could even use um, the Permanent Orange or the Vermilion and get a um, get a richer color, a darker color if you want to, because the if you can see on the Burnt Sienna where I've got the glaze, because I do the swatch and then I do a glaze over it, you can see almost a bit of a dulling there, a bit of a haze. And I think that is because of the granulation in the black that's giving you that little bit of a haze. So if you wanted a crisper gray, like maybe you didn't want a granulating shadow, you want a really dark black, there's a lot of other mixes you could do. You could do the Matter Lake Deep with Thalo Green, that would give you a very intense black. Um, I mean, you could use black, but I find if you pull from colors you're already using, you get a more uh, luminous black. But you have all the options there, which is really nice. Let's see, I didn't do that with that. And I got a couple more here that I did with that set. We've got, um, I love the background here. Um, I used the Burnt Sienna, and that Burnt Sienna, as we know, has the PBK 11 in it, which is that magnetic uh, Mars Black. Oops, I got a racer under there. Um, and that just using the Burnt Sienna where I did was enough to pull granulation into that background. And I just think it's so pretty. Um, I used it with some Thalo Blue. And the Thalo Blue and the Burnt Sienna granulated because of just that little bit of um, PBK11, I think. I don't see chalkiness. So I don't think it's granulating or flo flocculation from um, chalks being in the paint. I I think I've got, I think I found the diamond in the rough. I think I found a steal of a deal here. Um, I'm not saying buy paint if you don't need it, but I am going to say that if you if you want to stock up, um, it's not a bad it's not a bad buy at all. And I did this also with the um, with the art whale paints, and I did use some colored pencil for highlighting and stuff at the end. There is a video on this, a time lapse on my YouTube channel. Um, so if you want to see them in action, you'll be able to see that on this and on that because I did record those, and you know see what you think and see if it might be right for you. I'm excited. I think this would be great for teachers because um, it can be very expensive to get good quality supplies for your students. And um, especially with tubes, you can get a bunch of plastic pallets and you can put the tubes in it. Like, I don't know if, if you have a store, uh, if you live somewhere where you've got an Ocean State job lot, they have a similar pallets to this that are $2. They're, they, I think, have 16 wells maybe, but the wells are on both sides. But I didn't have any cracking on this, so hopefully they wouldn't fall out if you did use a, a palette that had two-sided wells. But that would be a very inexpensive way to outfit a class to get those $2 palettes and get one set of these and kind of you could fill many palettes with these 15 ml tubes. So I like, I like options like that. I like to be able to um, have products I can recommend to teachers so they can give good supplies to the kids and um, or even their adult students and not break the bank. And because, you know, the more you spend on supplies, the more you have to charge for your classes, and this just makes art accessible to more people. Um, man, I'm impressed with these. I've been looking for something wrong with them all week, and I can't find it. I mean, yeah, there might be some colors that I would have rather had, but honestly, I feel like it's a pretty robust, well-rounded palette, and I mean, and hopefully it'll stay a really good secret because people will look at this and see, think that it's something from a toy store and not good paint, but man, it's good paint, so um, so if you want this, buy it before <laughs> before the price goes up and before people like, get on uh, get to know how good it is. I couldn't find any reviews on this, so um, I think I might be the first, and I hope you guys are the first to get it if you want it, and you know before the prices go up on it because I I just I can't find anything wrong with it. These they're beautiful paints, and I really have enjoyed painting them with them. They're not gonna they're not gonna hinder your ability to paint at all, and. Uh, yeah, I really don't see too many negatives, except for maybe the uh, some of the mixtures. 
and uh, I really want to know who makes these because they got to be made by somebody. They're, I don't think there's an art whale factory out there making these. It's, it just it seems like it must be a private labeled thing. I'd love to know who makes these. The swatch card kind of reminds me of Paul Rubens, but the mixes don't remind me. Paul Rubens uses more variety in they use more single pigments and more variety. Unless this is kind of like a lower cost um, version, I don't know. I don't know. I'm impressed. That's all I can say. Um, you can judge from yourself what you think, but um, I'm very happy with these. I'm glad I bought them. I actually, there's a pan set too, and I did order the pan set because I'm telling you, Amazon knows me. They just pop a $5 coupon in front of my face when I go on <laughs> and I'll buy. Actually, the pan sets were $10 off. Um, so they're regular 34 and they're on sale for 24. So I snagged one last weekend. It hasn't come yet, but um, I will use it and I will review it when that comes if you're curious about that. Uh, I'll link to both in case there's a great sale. Um, I just have a feeling the prices are going to go up on these after I do a review like with the Rosa paints. But anyway, I'm impressed. I hope you found this helpful if you were curious about these. And thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and share it with your friends. That really helps my channel. Leave a comment, um, engage, <laughs> all that good stuff so more people can see these tutorials. I am eternally grateful. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting!